so I'm responsible. I'm organized. But hey, I can be a kook. <laughs> it's Monica. Why would someone do that? <laughs> One might wonder. It's Monica. It's Monica. Okay, so I'm responsible. I'm organized. But hey. It's Monica. It's Monica. It's Monica. It's Monica. Stop it! <laughs> All right, yeah, let's do this, mother. Monica Geller of popular sitcom Friends is one of the worst characters in the history of television. She makes me want to wash my eyes with hand sanitizer. She makes me want to stand in an abandoned Ukrainian parking lot and scream her name at a bunch of dead crows. Nobody liked her except for Chandler. He married her. And that brings me to my second point. What kind of a name for a show was Friends when two of them were related and the rest of them just fucked for 10 seasons? Maybe their fucking was secondary to their friendship. Or they all had enough emotional equilibrium to be able to maintain a constant state of mutual respect, despite the fucking, or conspicuous non-fucking, that was occurring in their lives. But I have to say, it just doesn't seem emotionally realistic, especially considering that they were not the most self-aware of people. And to be able to maintain a friendship through the various complications of heterosexual monogamy is enormously difficult. Especially when you take into consideration what cunts they all were. I fell in love with a friend once and we liked to congratulate each other what good friends we were and how it was great that we could be such good friends and still fuck until we stopped fucking and then we weren't such good friends anymore. I had a dream the other night about this friend and how we were walking through sunlight many years ago. Dragged up from the vaults, like old military propaganda, you know the kind. Young women leaving a factory arm in arm, while their fiancés are being handsomely shot to death in Prague. And even though this friend doesn't love me anymore and I don't love them, at least not in a romantic sense, the memory of what it had been like not to want to strap concrete blocks to my head and drown myself in a public fountain rather than spend another day with them not talking to me came back and I remember the world for a moment as it had been when we had just met and love seemed possible and neither of us resented the other one and it made me sad not just because things ended badly but more broadly because my sadness had less to do with the emotional specifics of that situation and more to do with the transitory nature of romantic love, which is becoming relevant to me once again because I just met someone new and this dream reminded me that although I believe that there are ways that love can endure, it's just that statistically or based on personal experience, it's unlikely that things are going to go well for long. There is such a narrow window for happiness in this life and if the past is anything to go by, Everything is about to go slowly but inevitably wrong in a non-confrontational but ultimately disappointing way. You are so dumb that I consciously make an effort not to use compound words or words more than three syllables. You are so dumb. Monica, 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 Monica Geller from popular sitcom Friends was the favourite character of the Uber driver who drove me home the other day and is the main reason for this poem 
Because I remember thinking, Monica? Maybe he doesn't remember who she is. Because when I asked him specifically which character he liked best of Friends, he said, the, the woman. woman. And when I listed their names for him, Phoebe, Rachel and Monica, Monica. he said Monica. Monica. But he said it with a kind of question mark at the end, like, Monica? Monica? Which led me to believe either he was ashamed of liking her, or he didn't know who he was talking about and had got her confused with one of the other, less objectively terrible characters. I think the driver meant to say Phoebe because Phoebe is everyone's favourite. She once stabbed a police officer, she once gave birth to her brother's triplets, she doesn't give a shit what anyone thinks about her, Monica gives a shit what, what everyone thinks about her. Monica's parents didn't treat her very well, and that's probably where a lot of her underlying insecurities come from, but have since manifested themselves in controlling and manipulative behaviour. It's, it's not, not that, that I think, I think Monica, Monica is unredeemable. Is unredeemable. I can recognise that her personality has been shaped by a desire to succeed, and that when she did succeed, it was never enough. Particularly for her mother, who made her feel like her dreams were stupid and a waste of time. And that kind of constant belittlement can do terrible things to a person. So maybe getting really upset when people don't use coasters is an understandable or at least comparatively sane response to the psychic baggage of your parents never having believed in you. Why would someone do that? Often I look at the world and I'm dumbfounded that anyone can function at all, given the kinds of violence that so many people have inherited from the past. But that's still no excuse to throw a dinner plate at your friends during a quiet game of Pictionary. And even if that was an isolated incident, and she was able to move on from it, it still doesn't make me want to watch her on TV. I'm falling in love and I don't know what to do about it. Throw me in a haunted wheelbarrow and set me on fire. And don't even get me started on Ross. Monica, a poem by Hera Lindsay Bird.